Guys, I don't even do these kind of movies, but this movie is probably one of the best movies I've ever watched in my entire life. This is way up there, especially when it comes to cinematography. As a matter of fact, Greg Frazier, the uh, DP, the d director of uh, photography of this movie, won the best cinematography from the last movie, the Dune Part 1 movie. So this is really the top of the top right now. I mean, this is the creme de la creme. So today we're gonna break down a scene that enhances the storytelling of this movie. This is the first time in the entire movie that they introduce a daytime version of Giddy Prime, the planet, right? All the other planets in the movie have certain tone, certain color tone, um, but Giddy Prime is different, right? Because they wanna, they wanna show that this is the dark side of the movie. I think I watched an interview of Greg Frazier saying uh, that he had a conversation with uh, director. Then he was like, "Well, why don't we do this in black and white?" And I'm like, "Great, let's be bold." You know, like. Let's be bold, let's do it in black and white. And really that's the job of the DP, to make sure that the look, the, the color grading, the framing, the uh, everything, all the shots matches the vision of the director, which is Denis Villeneuve in this case. Look at this scene, man, as he comes out, right? This They are trying to deduce this character right here. And it starts with a dark frame. Uh, and then the camera pans from right to left very slowly. Um, and of course you have to use the right lens for this, especially for this type of a shot. The character is coming out and moves faster than the camera. And that's how you create this sense of like, yeah, there was a movement there. And right now, as he comes out, let me go back really quick. The last shot of this frame right here, you can tell that the more light they introduce in this frame, there is less saturation. And, and that's the idea. That's their idea. That's how they want us to be immersed in the story. This is the next shot right here. And right here is just a matter of depth, creating depth. They have the guard here, the first layer of depth right here and then the character, um, and then another um, group of people right here. Uh, that's the third layer. And then you go all the way back. Um, there are some stuff there, even the lighting. The lighting is just to create that depth. But check this out. I want to stop you really quick. And I don't know what this is. This is pr probably a pl platter of food or whatever it is. Uh, you guys let me know what this is. I'm not really good at that stuff. But it still has color because it's, it's more in the shaded area. And it still has that red, reddish, uh, brownish, maybe even some some blues there. Um, but everyone on this side, on the left side, check out the left side. It's black and white. You can still see some pink here on his head because it's in the shaded area. And even you can see this with these guards right here, this or this whatever these ladies are called, uh, because they are in the shaded area. And uh, this is a simple thing. And you can do on Final Cut Pro, maybe just use a wipe transition. Uh, I would say duplicate the clip. Uh, I mean, the simplest way to do it, duplicate the clip and then use the wipe transition up top, make it from left to right. And it's very simple, very simple. I don't know what Dave Cole, the colorist, uh, did when he color created this. Multiple ways to do this. The simplest way on Final Cut Pro is to use the white transition. As a character moves forward and exposed to bright daylight, now this is a close shot right here. And you can tell everything is, you know, more light on his face. All the highlights and mid-tones are very high key just to create that uh, contrast. There's the dark side and there is his face. It's a choice, an artistic choice. Again, I'm saying that all the time because uh, yes, there are some rules of color grading, there are some rules of composition, there are some rules of just how to shoot or how to expose, but at the end of the day, you're the artist, you're the content creator. So there are certain times in to enhance the story, to uh, to help the viewers, to help the, the 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 consumers. I guess I don't I don't like the word consumers, but to help the people that are watching, the people that are, that are uh, experiencing your content, uh, be immersed in that story. Uh, you have to make some choices that go a little bit away from the what what the book says or what the tutorial says. Yes, I said that <laughs> time to tutorials, but yeah, you, you have to go away from those things sometimes. 
sometimes just to enhance your story and everything is driven by your story. What story do you want to tell and how can you help people uh, be immersed in that story? That's all I have for today, guys. I hope you guys like this kind of video and maybe I should do more videos like this. Let me know in the comment section if you guys are into this kind of video, talking about cinematography, talking about framing, talking about composition, talking about color grading and all that stuff. Uh, and maybe there is value into that. And if you found value in that, just subscribe and let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully. Peace.